Guten Morgen. Today we will go through setting up CWATM for the Bima Basin at 5 arc minutes. The first thing we need to do is find the outlet, the longitude and latitude of the Bima Basin. For this, I'm going to go to YouTube and find a video I once made. I'll link to it in the video description uh, right here. It takes us to Google Earth Engine. I minimize this console. And let's go to the Bima Basin. The Bhima Basin is in Peninsular India, in the state of Maharashtra, which is the same state as Mumbai, but in a different basin. Uh, this is the Krishna Basin. We're looking at two resolutions here, 30 arc minute, 50 kilometer by 50 kilometer, and <clears throat> 5 arc minute, 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer. We'll be doing this at the higher resolution. Okay, now let's look for the Bima Basin. I'm going to remove the 30 arc minute. There's Solapur. I want to take the basin that is just at the confluence of these two rivers. Okay, let me take, just to be safe, it's coming in. Let's take this point. Yeah, right on the border of Maharashtra and Karnataka, which is the idea. Uh, the point of this is we've prepared already a model of the Bhima Basin at one kilometer, and now I want to show how the improvements in the model compare with uh, a standard version of CWM with the standard five minute uh, inputs. Okay, so I go to Inspector, and I click here, and I get this longitude and latitude. I'm going to copy that. Great, now let's go to the CWATM 5-minute input folder. This is available on Google Drive. It'll also be linked in the video description. <clears throat> I'm using one inside of our internal structure at EASA. See what I input five minutes. It looks just like this, except the version on Google Drive will be cleaned up. This has some extra folders in it because someone was putting extra folders in it. You'll have a standard CWM's template, which is what we're going to use. The template is already set up to use what is within this uh, input five minute folder, except for the climate data. That we cover in another video, I'll also link, but what you have to make sure is when you get the Meteo data, the climate data, also available in the Google Drive folder. You want to set the path to where you download the Meteo data, the climate data. Um, you want to put the path to that here. So I was doing the longitude and latitude. Okay, so the location, yeah, I was doing this at, maybe this is also for the beam, a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to remove the comma. I'm going to paste it beside mask map. And then I'm also going to paste to the site gauges. The time is going to run, I want to have no spin up just for the beginning. So it's going to run from 1st of June to, let's just do it for two months, just let's even do it for one month, just while we're testing, setting it up. So it'll run for one month from the 1st of June to the 1st of July. I'll remove the comma there. Now let's make sure we have this output folder. Okay, it already exists. I don't mind overwriting what's in there. Okay, updated. Already in a good spot. Updated. Okay. Limit abstraction. 
false. Keep everything as it is. Okay. I'm gonna run see what if. So I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to the folder that I was just in. Yeah, right here. I'm gonna open up a command prompt by going into the address bar and typing CMD. <clears throat> And type Python. If you have to activate a virtual environment, first activate the virtual environment, otherwise Python. The location of GitHub on your computer, C, GitHub, CWDM, slash run, underscore CWDM.py. And the name of the settings file, which is in this case, settings underscore, and then dash L. And let's see what we get. Bima Basin is about 40,000 square kilometers, so it looks like I probably took a, a cell, uh, one downstream, a couple downstream of the Bima Basin, at least, that we're comparing with. Bima Basin has a, a, a few delineations. So let's see, if I go one upstream. Okay, I can look at this one to see which ones are the most downstream. So the one I chose, which was this one, I guess, 47, 48, we're looking at the five minute. I want about 40,000. I want to make sure I also get this river. That one's too small, that's just the upstream river. This one also, okay. Let's see which way the direction goes. 12, 4, 2, 6. So this one, I think it's going like this, and it's coming down here. Okay, it's basically what we have. But I do want to get this other river in. So at 5 arc minute resolution, that's just uh, the best we're going to do. That will be the comparison. The model will run quite slowly because I'm using drives that are not on my local drive that are like remote it's running so now i'm just looking at results of the one kilometer version so this is the bima basin at one kilometer this is showing evapotranspiration so the darker spots represent oh actually this is rain the color is a bit strange this is rain in the bima basin you see it's mostly upstream downstream in the middle it's it's mostly upstream but in the middle it's definitely less compared to everywhere else and here's river discharge zoom in and see the the river and lake underneath Okay, while this runs, I can look for other work.
it's uh, completed. Now I'm going to look at something called water circles, or this notebook is called water cycles to analyze the water balance of the run. So our output folder is here. This is also discussed in previous videos. Limit abstraction is false. I'm also going to change the color from red to blues. Okay, let's run this and see what we get. We see the lower resolution already. Every cell here is is uh, 10 kilometers by 10 kilometers. In this other version, these are all one kilometer by one kilometer. So you see they bleed in together much faster. This is the old version. It's finished running. Mm. Oh, that's the first version. Okay. okay, The what I'm looking for is the balance is closed. This is a run of one month, we see. These are the inputs and outputs over that month, so we see some rainfall, um, punctuated and sharp, while the outputs, which are water flowing out of the basin through the river, as well as evapotranspiration, are smooth and dampened. This example, we see um, this amount of rain is, is larger than this amount of evapotranspiration. There's an increase in soil moisture. This much fossil water is used. A decrease in lakes, an increase in rivers and groundwater. Uh, not to take these results too seriously, um, they are running without a warm up, and it's just a one month test to make sure that the balance is closed, and this looks good. Now let's do uh, a one-year run. Actually, I'm comparing this with many years. That was the point. Uh, let's just do the year 2012. Okay. Let me actually start in. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to run for one year, and this time I'm going to save an initial file so that I can load to not have such a cold start. Initial, no, not load initial, that's the false. But I'm going to save an initial. And I'm going to do it for the last date of the run. Great. Now, since I have a notebook open, it will complain if I try to rewrite, overwrite this output folder. So let's call it not that one. <laughs> output five minutes. This is now Bima twenty twelve. I choose June because the monsoon or the rainy season starts in twenty twelve. So you see this flush of water and then a long dry season. So let's now make this folder. Okay, and now we go around the model, up. Okay. Mission denied, I'm still writing to that folder. Did I not say, I didn't save. Control S. See? Permission denied. Doesn't want to rewrite in this folder. Yeah, that's why I created the new folder, but I forgot to save the settings file. So up arrow, run again. In a mind. Ah, it's all <laughs> great timing. Um, copy this. Now put it in here. Mm. 
Now we're running the one-year simulation. We see the rain is in the upstream. Okay, great. So in this year, we had um, 2.7 e to the 10 meter cube of water. So we have 1 billion and then 4 billion. Is it to the 9 anywhere? One to the ten. Okay. Yeah. So this means that there were twenty seven billion meter cube of water. That is twenty seven square, twenty seven kilometer cube of rainfall in this year. Around 18 billion meter cube, 18 kilometer cube of water evapotranspired, transformed from moisture into vapor through plants or soil. Of all that water, 4.7 billion meter cube of water, 4.7 kilometer cube of water was flowing through the river downstream out of the Bhima Basin into the rest of the Krishna. So 4.7 kilometer cube was flowing out of this part. So was flowing out of this point into the rest of the Krishna Basin. Said in another way, Of all the outputs, 18% of all the outputs from the basin left the Bhima Basin through the river, flowing out of the Bhima Basin into the rest of the Krishna Basin. But the majority of all the precipitation that fell in the Bhima Basin was either held in storage in the Bhima Basin or evapotranspired. So, transformed into vapor, went into the atmosphere, through plants or through soil. Great. Now before we do a comparison with specific points in the river or specific lakes and reservoirs, let's look at the same long run we did here. So this ran from 2011, January 2011, to I guess the end of 2014. Okay, so we're going to do this from January 2011, so 1 slash 1 slash 2011, to let's just do 1 slash 1 2015. And now we can use the initial file we just created, so let's go look for it. Where are the initial files saved? Let's look. Save initial root bima. Root is the input five minute data set. For me, that's here. In it, and the most recent one we created was this one. 2013, copy that name. So let's load initial, put it into here with the dot nc. Let's load initial, equals now true. I'm going to save initial, let's save it to the last day of 2015, why not? 
But since we have the start update from the beginning of the monsoon season, let's also give it a bit of spin up, a little bit more spin up. So we'll start from 2010, the beginning of the rainy season 2010. The specific year is not always the most important, but starting around the same time of year is important. Because the initial file will have gone through a rainy period and then a long dry period. So we'll start it right when it would start in terms of seasonality. So we start in June 2010, it runs for six months without producing output, and then spin up, it'll start producing outputs from the 1st of 2011 to the 1st of 2015. Great, now let's see if I can, yeah, now let's do 2012, we're doing 2011 to 20, let's say 2014, and I'll make create a new output folder. Save. I am now, let's make sure. <clears throat> Loading the initial file we created, saving the initial file we created, or still saving the initial file, but for now the last date of the run. Yeah, great. Save. Okay. I already finished the figures. I finished waiting for this to run. Uh, let's come back together when this run is finished. See you soon. Guten uh, Morgen. Our four-year run has finished. We will now run the notebook. And then we will continue the process of starting the calibration. Okay, we have this output folder from the long run. This is our one year. Update this here. And run the notebook. This will take some time. Ah, that's quick. The nice thing about running at lower resolutions. Okay, we can actually compare this right away. Again, we could benefit from a longer run or a longer spin up period, but already it's going to be a great comparison with the one kilometer version for this time period. This one is um, lags much more as it is at the one kilometer resolution. Okay, we are going to calibrate the five minute version, and I expect in this we'll see a closer comparison, but just out of the box, the five minute input data set for the Bima Basin compared to one kilometer. We can even compare the rainfall right away. Now they are going to have slightly different outputs. The one on the left, so the one kilometer, is using mod flow, um, a groundwater flow model. One on the right, we're just using a linear reservoir. So we, we don't discuss fossil water, for example, in the one kilometer mod flow version. It's dealt with differently. But we are even using different rainfall data sets. So let's compare this. So this is 147 kilometer cube. This is 145 kilometer cube, so rainfall is definitely similar. Let's start backwards, see how lake evaporation is similar or different. This is 4.6 billion meter cube. This is 5.2, a little bit higher here. Consumption is 4.6. That is the water that doesn't return to the system from, particularly here, human withdrawals and consumption of industrial, domestic, and livestock water uses. So that's here 4.6. And this is here 3.7. But we see the biggest difference is that downstream is more prominent in the five-minute version. 
It makes sense because we understand there is significant uh, reservoir and groundwater management in the Bima Basin and the legacy of irrigated agriculture. So here we have this downstream four point, um, we have uh, 45.6 billion meter cube. And here we have uh, 25.1 billion meter cube. The next step is let us calibrate the five minute version for uh, a station called Tackley, which is just after the confluence of these two rivers we were just looking at. One step before that, let's look at the dates that we have for the Tackley station. Hunt around for this. For the one kilometer version, I calibrated, we calibrated with uh, five stations, uh, weighing the importance of the different stations. We'll start off uh, just with one station, Takli, and this is going from 2001. I want to remove the zeros, actually, because they are not always helpful. Yeah, let's go. Let's go for this one, which removed the zeros in the 2003. Okay, let's just look at Tackley as a time series. All right, so there is no discharge in the dry season, and then uh, discharge in the wet season. So we have this from 2001. until the end of 2009. Is it the beginning of 2001? Sometimes the calibration does have a funny way of dealing with dates. We see here it goes month, day, year. We're just going to assume it's like this for now, but I know it sometimes changes. Okay. No changes. I'm going to copy this. Well, we'll do this in a second. So we know these are the dates that we want. Something to make the calibration run faster is we can pre-calculate or have as an output reference of evapotranspiration. So when we calculate the potential water use of different land covers, it is always reference of evapotranspiration multiplied by a crop coefficient, which changes spatio-temporally. The reference of evapotranspiration is using the Penman-Monteith equation and is um, built off of temperature, radiation, uh, wind, humidity. So we can run the model once for all the days we're going to use in the calibration and output this reference of evapotranspiration. Then when we run the calibration, we have this as an input, which doesn't change because we're going to be using the same climate. So then it can just read in the reference of evapotranspiration and not use time calculating it each day. So it speeds up the calibration, speeds up the running time generally. How we do this. Okay, so we're going to get we want results from, okay, now this is using day, month, year, preferred date arrangement, 2001. And this is going to go till 2009. Yeah, so one can find discharge data from a variety of sources. This we have from previous collaborations with engineers and, and water managers in the Bima Basin in Pune Irrigation Circle. Okay, so we want outputs from between these two dates, but every time we are running 
Um, so in the calibration, we're going to run with different sets of parameters. We're going to keep tweaking the model and see how the performance changes. But every time we tweak the parameters, the whole system can change. So we can have something like a five-year spin-up period with each new set of parameters to allow the model to settle in to converge to its arrangement with the new parameters. So let's do something like 1996. And let's start in the wet period. Okay, I'm going to save a new initial file as the new date here. Actually, since we're going to be starting here, I want to save another wet period initial file. So let's, in 2009, so let's say, let's save the beginning of the wet period in 2009. Then we'll use this as the start for all the calibration runs. Load initial, let's take our newest one. That's the beginning of 2015. Well, this is also fine. Yeah, let's just start then. This is good practice. We're going to load initial, so this is our most recent one. But this starts at the beginning of June. So rather than starting at the web period, we're going to begin at the beginning of the beginning of the year. Be beginning of the calendar year. And then let's also save the beginning of 2009. So then we'll use this beginning of 2009 as the initial um, setting, the load initial, the initial load for all the calibration runs. Good, good, good. Okay, now to save reference of evapotranspiration, we're going to save reference of evapotranspiration for land and water. We have at the bottom, we're going to have all of these outputs. All of these outputs are necessary to create these water cycle notebooks, uh, water yeah, the water circles and the water cycle notebook we were just demonstrating. But they slow down the run of the model. All of these variables are being created daily and as maps. So we're going to comment out this line. Out map daily, we're going to put ET capital R E F. E T ref capital E capital T R E F E W ref. Okay, that's going to give us the reference of evapotranspiration over land and water. Not a period, but a comma. I also am going to be interested before doing a calibration run how it already compares to discharge at different points along the base. So we're going to also take maps of discharge. And the last one I want to compare is lake res storage, because we also have any locations of time. We have observations of time series of reservoir storage. Lake res storage, this variable. Outmap daily, ET ref, EW ref, discharge, lake res storage. These are the only ones we need for the calibration. We have updated our initial file to be using the one we just created. We changed the dates to be the dates that we will run for the calibration. So this will look the same for the calibration. We're converging on what the calibration settings file will look like. Oh, I updated the gauges to just choose uh, one uh, cell or two cells upstream. The, the last one I actually clicked in the video, or on the Google map. Uh, let's change, let's create a new output folder. It's called 2001 to 2009. Let's also put another date in here just to show that we're doing the startup from 1990. I want to make it run a little bit faster, so let's just do 1996. 
1997 here. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Let's get this to run. Okay, so once we have, yeah, let's get this to run, and then we'll then we will input this etref ewref as inputs, change an option so that it knows that it can read these rather than calculating it. We'll then compare these outputs to observations of discharge and leg rest storage, as well as compare to the one kilometer model, and then run the calibration. I actually made it. I actually made it bigger. Interesting. Oh no, sorry. I made it smaller. That was the idea. It's it's still slightly bigger, but I'm I'm happy with the change. Okay, then we will see each other uh, on uh, next week, uh, Monday next week. Schönen Morgen, schönen Tag, schönen Abend, schönes Wochenende. Ciao.